All right, so I'm still in my profile. Um, top right corner, I can go to profile. And I've got a couple of boards that I created. And I've also got an area to pin. I also have a plus icon on the top right corner. Um, I can always use it there too. So if I'm off on some other screen, if I go back to the Pinterest main screen where I see all the stuff, I always have that red pin button on the top right. So if I'm under my profile or anywhere else, I have that. Now, notice uh, we have a couple of ways to do it. So I have save a pin the web or your device. That's similar to if I hover over there, upload an image or save from site. They, they have different terms here which is confusing, but if you're doing it from your profile here you have the options of the web which is your site and it has here your device which is equivalent to upload. So if you just make a note, upload is the same as device and Save from site is the same from your website. Uh, here it also shows you from this screen, it also shows you create ad. So similar to the other networks, you can pay to have your content viewed by more people. So a couple of ways to do it then. Um, if you do upload image or you do your device, it simply says, okay, select your picture from your device optional destination URL. That's what we saw uh, for the examples of other people's uh, pins that they had a an address embedded into what they shared, which is an active link which takes you to a website. So if I were testing this, I can click Upload Image, and I've got some sample images. You don't have to do this, but I have sample images on the left side, pictures, sample images. I'm going to upload a picture. None of this is bakery related, so I'll just select whatever. And that picture is going to be uploaded. It's going to be put into my account in a, in a board on the next screen. But here I've got destination. So if that was a picture of something that I'm selling, and I have there a link back to the shopping cart or the catalog that would be attached to my picture. So if you upload, so sharing to Pinterest, we have the upload method, upload method, and then we have the website method, website method. So upload method. Uh, pick a photo from your uh, device. So it could be your phone or it could be your computer. Pick a photo from device. Add a link to your site, like a store link, optional. But really, I would recommend don't do that as optional. Whenever you share anything to Pinterest or any social network, the goal is always to try to get a conversion, right? What's the point of me paying all that money to put a, a billboard on the street if the, if the goal is not for them to come to my restaurant? So even though it's free, Anything that you're doing here should always be in the goal of getting that result. Getting a phone call to, to get a consultation. Getting hired. Um, you know, doing something to, uh, to get a result. So if, if I embed a link back to my website, that's very good. Hopefully, my picture was so good, my content was so good, that it takes them back to, that entices them to click to go back to my website. So always think about putting your website link on your pins. And then add to a board. 
That's the next screen under continue. After continue. So let's say I put the address, I've got the picture, I click continue, and then here we have the possibilities. This screen's a little tricky, unfortunately, but once you know the trick, it's fine. So you have choose a board. Describe. The thing that's tricky is if you choose the board, it will be put into that board right away. It won't let you add the description. So it should be in the order number one, describe it. Number two, choose the board. So we've got a spot here for you to write more about what this pin is. More keywords, more description, more enticement about what that picture is, your product. Write that first, and then choose a board. Because if I never write this, and I first choose the board, it'll put it right into that board. I can go back to my profile and edit the pin and further add the, the description but you might as well do it in the order correctly here of add the description and then put it into the board. If you do the opposite, I have to return to the pen. extra steps it's not obvious but it is from left to right left is the description right is the board it's not that obvious so you should add the description then select the board and then it'll go in and here you have the option at the moment also to create a board right here I have a brand new thing that doesn't fit into any of these so I can create a board right now Tasty ingredients. Create that board. The moment I created it, I also put it into the board right away. So be careful about that. Again, add the description, then add it to the board or create a board. Because as soon as you select the board or create the board, it'll put your pin into that board. Tasty ingredients board and look at how empty it looks because I need to put in a few more pins in that board to make it look more complete. Creating board. Spot. <coughs> Be careful. It will also right away add the pin to it. You'd have to return to the pin itself again to add the rest. So the other way to do this is the website method. Provide a link to your website. Pinterest will scan the link looking for photos. The photo is added to a board you choose. It gets 
gets the, the original link automatically. So let's say I have a website and I have articles and blogs and all of that, recipes on my website. Uh, I can copy and paste the link either to the home page or to one of those screens, like that one recipe. Pinterest will then scan that screen, find the pictures to extract, and I'm going to pick this picture, will be saved to this board, and the original link comes with it. So as an example, save a pin from the web. It's also going to recommend the Pinterest browser button. This will give you a new icon in your web browser where whenever you're visiting any website, you can click the pin button and just initiate the process. But the way this one works is by having a, a link. I'm just typing the link of the home page here. If I had, you know, blogs, recipes, cookie, chocolate. If I had a page on my site, I could do that as well. I could do the whole site. It won't scan the whole site. It'll scan that one page, the home page. It'll then try to find a picture there to be able to post on Pinterest, because it's all about pictures. Valid link. The home page. Or a specific page. So either one of those would work. If I use this example, I'll just put the, the home page link, click Next. It's going to look at that page, scan it, try to find some photos. These are the photos that it found on that page. The logo, a couple of other photos. And it also saw that I had already shared to Pinterest before from other accounts stuff on that site. So anything you upload to Pinterest then is part of the whole Pinterest database so it knows that other websites or other users have already pinned stuff to Pinterest from that website. Yes? Victor, is there any security issue with them scanning your website? In theory it's only scanning to find graphics. So anything that has a link to a JPEG, a GIF, or a ping file. So it's not, in theory, it's not scanning anything deeper than that just to find the code wherever there's a one of those graphics. That one page. So let's say I want to use this, uh, this one. So the, the, this is the one I'm going to actually pin. So that whole upload, that whole save from site, that's what this is. Clicking on that, then it's the same sort of thing tell us about the pin, the link, it's automatically going to have the link VMC Inc. back already in it. I can add the description. I would do the description first before the boards. This is one bug that I've seen here. You saw that I created a different board uh, recipes or ingredients. There's a bug that sometimes the boards that you create from this screen don't show up until you refresh, until you reload the screen. So if I try that again, now it's there. So this is why I would possibly think about creating the boards first so that I know that they're going to be visible easily. But if you if you do create a board here, don't get confused if you don't see it. People sometimes create it again. And you've got two of the same board. If you don't see the board that you think should be there, just refresh or reload your screen. 
should then show it. So what you write here is, um, again, more marketing speak about what this is about for you to get more views or hits when you put it in the right place. This shows I saved it. I might get the notification, why not promote it? And as a starting point, as a beginner, I don't think that's uh, as necessary as Facebook. I think creating the different boards, putting the different content, using terminology that is active and marketing buzzwords and all of that, I think that goes a long way in Pinterest. If you want to go further, that's when you can think about putting budgets once a month to spend $10 to reach people, more people on Pinterest. Once a month, $10 spend on Facebook. Or once a week, spend $2 uh, on Twitter to reach people. Uh, this is what successful companies do. They engage in marketing, either in the real world or in the digital world. Billboards on the street, ads in the newspaper, uh, you know, being on the morning talk show, the local morning show. The owner of a business gets interviewed. Well, that's free advertising. Uh, that's advertising from that morning show. And then online advertising is pinning or tweeting or posting. But then to reach more audience, you promote it. You pay and reach more audience. It could be pretty affordable. You can look at it on your own about the prices and such and the different things that you can do with Pinterest promotions. But it's very similar to what we talked about with Facebook. It's just your budget and your time and your audience. But I think on Pinterest it could work pretty well, just being active. You can go explore the other screens, ads, analytics, and all of that. This little compass to explore that's um, ideas and trends. California spicy crab stuffed avocado. Uh, so up there on that little compass to explore, to get ideas of what's popular, to see photos, um, to get the idea of what could work. You know, that photo right there is not that special. It's just a bunch of eggs, close up, kind of dark compared to other photos. This is a very simple photo itself, but the big idea is the product. Uh, what is this, like a... Doily, Woodland Fox Nursery Rug, crochet pattern. Okay, so it's a photo of their of their rug. They're, they have it on the floor, they're standing up above it, they're taking a photo down to it. So use the Explore screen to get ideas of what kind of photos to create. That's a terrible photo right there, it's blurry. I can't read the, the text below it. It's off angled instead of straight on, perhaps. Frugal fashionista. So see what works and what doesn't. Yes. So um, can we share like one of the strategies that we found um, on Pinterest that's been pretty successful for your clients? Like I know one would be like we always put it like blues and like hmm. What I would say is for Pinterest, what I like that works is. How can you tap into an upcoming think about what holidays are coming up or sporting events or industry events. Think of something that's coming up. Then create a well lit close up photo of your product. that taps into the event. So the strategy tangibly would be I'm Victor's Bakery, Halloween's coming up, we're gonna sell Halloween themed cakes. So well lit close-up. If I it was in this room right now and I wanted to take a photo of my cake, you know I put it down right here, the room seems relatively bright enough. But the camera often 
doesn't work as well as the human eye. So turning on this extra light right here that I have off so it doesn't give us glare, that's going to be brighter on my product because the light's right there. If I go by a window where there's some ambient light or light coming in, then I get a lot of that great bright light. A lot of the photos that fail is because of that, and it's so obvious. A good photo is, is a good photo because you can see it. That one about the t-shirt, the that was a terrible photo, blurry and dark and off-center and all of that. But all of these other ones, this one's kind of, kind of getting there. I can tell that one was flash. Flash often is the problem. But yeah, it makes your main subject look nice, but then the rest looks dark and foreboding because the, la the light didn't reach that far. I would avoid flash as much as possible have a nice bright room with as much ambient light all around to take the photo better. So for Victor's Bakery, I'd have a great looking photo of the product close up. Uh, a lot of these ones that you see here, you know, that's a photo of the, of the crock pot there, the slow cooker close up. Here's what I'm getting at right here. That, that banana bread, uh, you know, that photo everyone can take. Uh, it's close to one of the slices. The other part there is blurry. Oftentimes your camera will do it automatically. Or if you play with your settings, you can do some of these tricks, but you don't have to do the blur trick. This one, again, I don't know what that is. It's cropped off. Who cares? It's, it, it's fine. There's maybe a couch or whatever, but this is close up here to focus on these items. Nice and bright. Side lighting. That's a good photo. Uh, update bushel baskets and with pink and trim. So it's a how to update these baskets. So look at the examples of others, but what has worked is, it sounds simple, but close-ups. Look at that. That's a really co good close-up of their product. It's also good because the nail polish itself is blue and they're at the beach with a lot of blue. There's a monochromatic motif that stands out. So you can really overthink it and uh, what is a good photo, what is the rule of thirds, what is the harmoni harmonious color wheel, and all of that. That's much more advanced to get into, but look at examples of other people, what they've done. These are all close-ups here, so think of a thing that's coming up, good photo, close-ups, maybe think in more advanced terms eventually, of also creating text, to accompany the picture, this was more effort in design because it's two photos plus the text. But just the one photo, like that, okay, that's a terrible photo. Uh, venison or moose sausage links with pepper sandwich. That's like, what am I even looking at? I'm looking at a dirty cutting board with the uh, frozen meat over there. <laughs> if they had simply zoomed in on the, on the julienne peppers here, that'd be way better. Clean that cutting board, maybe. That was creative right there. 20, 28 likes uh, for hair creations. That's pretty creative. So, of course, being pretentious with black and white, but anyway, it's cool. And then her hair, and then her reflection. So, just look at the examples of the inspiration to, to get good, good ideas here. So, as we wind down the lecture again, uh, this one's going on the wrong direction. They have the idea of showing the hairstyle in different ways, good, but it's not that great lighting. The wall is extra weird. If they just brighten it up more, you want to look at the camera, especially if there's a person, if the product is, you know, for a person, looking at her face might be better to make that connection. See what's there for, for the ideas. I'm going to, as usual, uh, record this and upload it.